Five on Your Sideline is sponsored by Seiden Stricker Noby John Deere. What's going on, Missouri and Illinois? Welcome into Five on Your Sideline. I'm rocking solo tonight. As you see, Corey Miller has the night off. Also, I have some personal news to share with you all. If you haven't heard, I'm headed to Minnesota for a sports gig there. Next Friday will be my final Five on Your Sideline. But until then, let's have some fun, why don't we? Gotta love this MCC rivalry between CBC and DeSmet. In the first quarter, Ralph Dixon gets the handoff and he knew what to do with it. He goes to the crib for six points. CBC in control and leading by two scores, but DeSmet's Chris Cotton says hold my Gatorade. He throws the ball up to Dimitri and Cannon, and Cannon, well, he also knew what to do with it. He finds pay dirt, cuts into that CBC lead. It's a seven point game, but the cadets have this guy by the name of Jeremiah McClellan. And let me tell you, he needs no introduction. Just watch this man work. He's a man amongst boys. Great grab, 21 to seven after that score. CBC went on to win 41 to 28. Another big dog, Francis Howell taking on Troy. The Vikings' Adam Shipley called his own number, and I can see some tackling drills in Troy's future on Monday. Shipley touches pay dirt, and the Vikings, they would take the lead. Now, Shipley said it, if it ain't broke, I'm not fixing it, but Troy fixed their approach on this play. Ja'Kai Lane with the shoestring tackle. Howell said, okay, we'll just hand it off to our beast of a running back, Brady Holtman. He goes nowhere, thanks to Troy's Brett Smith. A little four-on-four -four crime right there, but Howell went back to their moneymaker and tonight Shipley was cashing out. Another touchdown on the ground. Howell remains undefeated with a 35 to 19 victory. Parkway North went on the road to take on Ledoux and Ledoux would lead seven to nothing but Bo Dolan's wishes he could get this pass back because he would be picked off by Everett Q and he would go in for the pick six. The game it's knotted at seven after that one but Great players respond to adversity, and Ledoux, the Ledoux quarterback did just that. Dolan finds Dylan Hawthorne for a beauty of a score. The game is fun. The band is rolling. That's what you love to see. And they say, you know what, let's add some more to it. Dolan, he would drop back, and this time Adonis Whitley is there for the 28-yard connection. 21-7 rounds after that point, they win 56-28. Let's head over to Cardinal Ritter where they debuted their new scoreboard against Luther and St. Charles. Marvin Burks is known to be a defensive guy, but this season he's been showing off those running back skills, lowering his pads right there. The drive was stall, but on fourth down, Antoine McKay Jr. finds his big tight end, Dallas winner Johnson for the first down to keep the drive alive. Coach Fain, he calls a timeout to rally the troops right before halftime, and it will work. New quarterback Carson Boyd finds his brother Ryan Boyd, and it's a Cardinal Ritter touchdown. They blank the other team in this one, Luther and St. Charles, 33 to nothing. Holt trying to get back to the state title game. First, they have to take care of business against Fort Zumwalt North. North with the ball, trying to get something rolling, but fumble! And it's our Rick Meyer's son, Richard Meyer, with the recovery. I know Dad is happy after that one, but he may not like this, though. The Panthers' Andrew Guthrie would take the handoff, and he nearly showed his afterburners and tail lights to everybody on the team until the Holt defense rallied right here to bring them down. Now, back on the opposing end, Holt with the ball. Owen Merrill did a great job filling in at the end of last season at quarterback. He says, hey, man, ain't nothing changed. Read option will wind up in great field position for the Indians, and they sneak out a winner, 14 to 7. SLU got their first win of the season last week at home. Today, they kept that momentum rolling, taking on Vianney. Kicking off the fun, Marco Sanson finds Joseph Harris, who watched a lot of Randy Moss, apparently. He mosses this defender for a score. That duo wasn't done, though. I want you to look at this play. I don't know what is better, the dynamic duo or our photographer, Tom Stasiak. Both were incredible on this play. That play was set up the highly coveted wideout you guys may know a thing or two about. Ryan Wingo, this time on the other side of the uh, field, another Junior Bills touchdown. They went on to win 49 to 14. Now, as you guys know by now, each week we feature two teams for our game of the week. But while the players duke it out on the football field, the student bodies get after it in the school building for our Tackle for Hunger food drive. This week's battle was between St. Mary's and Deshin. Let's start with the football highlights. Look, this may not be real bling, but look at it. It is shining tonight, the pancake chain. Now I want you to look at this guy. We don't talk much about... Uh, excuse me, Chase Hendricks, because every week we're talking about the Mizzou commit, Jamal Roberts. But let me tell you, Chase Hendricks is a baller with that catch he showed you. That was just a glimpse. Quarterback said, let me give him the real deal. David Leonard drops back, heaves up a dime. Hendricks said, on your head, young fella. What a beautiful touchdown. St. Mary's in full control. 
Now Hendricks was nowhere near done. Back to him in the second. His defense was like, let's get the ball back to him. And they did. After a putt return from Chase Hendricks was called back, he said, no worry. Leonard said, we'll run it back this time through the air. He says, say less. Leonard takes the snap, drops back, and Hendricks was there for the score. And St. Mary's was there for the win, 48 to 6. Tackle Hunger is sponsored by Neighbors Credit Union. Here you belong. Now we get to that food drive. As you guys know, they're tackling more than foot each other on the field. They're tackling hunger every week. And between the two schools, they raised 3,976 pounds of non-perishable food. But the winner this week goes to the Shin with 3,337 pounds. This will help feed 994 people. Now,